ramping up plans to deport Haitian migrants overwhelming the southern border in Del Rio, Texas. According to officials, around 14,000 migrants are gathered under the Del Rio International Bridge. Many of the Haitians were, or there are believed to have been living in South America since 2010, but the toll of the pandemic on the region fueled migration to the U.S. southern border. You've seen the images. There is another humanitarian crisis unfolding in the Del Rio at this hour. Right now, close to 14,000 migrants are encamped under the International Bridge and surrounding areas. Vanessa, you were there yesterday. We were there yesterday. Now, right now, the Biden administration is working on plans to send Haitians back to their homeland. Details are not yet finalized, but could likely involve five to eight flights per day starting tomorrow. And San Antonio could be among the departure cities. Yeah, we, we now have one third of the population of the city of Del Rio, Texas in a confined space. On Monday, the encampment under the International Bridge in Del Rio looked like this. A few thousand migrants taking shelter. The dynamics of what's happening down there is changing almost every minute now. By Friday afternoon, that number had grown to nearly 14,000. Border Patrol Chief Raul Ortiz said the cartels are busing the migrants, mostly Haitians, into Acuna, Mexico, and they're crossing the river into Del Rio in large numbers. We've never seen a migrant population explode so quickly on the immediate border area like we saw over the last 72 hours. Ortiz said officials will start moving the migrants to processing centers across the region. What we're experiencing right now are, you know, a huge population mixed of uh, unaccompanied children, family units, and then, of course, single adults. Ortiz said they hope to clear the encampment within the next week. He said more manpower is coming in the next 24 hours to control the situation as the migrants are becoming more agitated. Uh, we need to do everything we can to manage the safety and security of the migrants, the community, and, of course, our agents. And another fear, COVID-19. Thousands gathered in a confined space. Mayor Bruno Lozano issued an emergency declaration, part of the plan shutting down the Del Rio International Bridge. I need to protect the assets of Del Rio, Texas. A native of Del Rio, Ortiz said this is something the city has never seen before. You know, this is uh, ground zero force right now. This is just, uh, at this point, overwhelming for, our, for the resources that we have on hand. And with more caravans expected to arrive in the coming days, we need to make sure uh, is that we work with our partners in Mexico so we can slow that traffic down or deter it and, and turn it around. You know, they need to know that they don't have a free pass to come into the U.S. right here. Now, the Haitians at the border are seeking asylum. Haiti is one of the poorest nations and plagued with natural disasters and political instability. In July, the president was assassinated, and in August, a major earthquake and powerful storm hit the country. As thousands of those migrants enter here into the United States, Governor Greg Abbott has set aside major funding to secure the southern border. On Friday, he signed a bill that will provide $2 billion in state funding. Now, a large chunk of that will go towards building a border wall, and the rest of it will go to law enforcement, emergency responders, jails, and lawyers. Turning to this story, thousands of Haitian migrants have arrived in Del Rio, Texas. This is the Department of Homeland Security announces a new strategy to deal with the overwhelming crisis. For more, we are joined by the former acting ICE director and Fox News contributor Tom Homan. Tom, thank you for taking time on Saturday. As you have, may have just seen, DHS putting out a six-point plan to address the crisis. These images coming out of Del Rio are nothing short of startling and stunning. I have spent a lot of time there. Just five months ago, I watched thousands cross the Rio Grande River. I went into the river to confront a smuggler, but I saw nothing like this. How, I'm going to get to the six-point plan, but first, just to ask you because of your experience, how do we get this under control? You fired the Secretary of Homeland Security who's failed doing his job. He's violated his oath. He's the Secretary of Homeland Security, and his inactions have made our homeland insecure. I, th I mentioned this this morning on the show. I talked to a command at the Border Patrol this morning, Griff. His words were this, his words, not mine. He, he says, broken arrow. We are broken arrow, Tom. We, are, we have lost operational control of the southern border. We are overwhelmed. 
we are being invaded and we can't control it. That, those statements alone you know, should wake up every American that this border is out of control. And, and yet the Secretary of Homeland Security still says the border is secure and is closed. He needs to be removed. And you want to fix it? Even though I have no respect in this administration, I'll come back tomorrow. And I'll bring Mark Morgan and Steve Miller with me and we'll shut it down in a week. Because there shouldn't be a six-step plan. There's a one-step plan. Re-implement re Trump's policies that worked, that drove illegal immigration down 80%. What's, what's most insulting about what's going on right now, it's intentional. They purposely came in within two weeks, destroyed the most secure border we ever had, and opened the floodgates to win the progressive left, to win the election. This is intentional. They have abandoned the men and women of the Border Patrol, and our country's at great risk because of it. As we look at our drone pictures there of that Del Rio Bridge, 14,000 or more migrants under there. In the last 24 hours, my sources confirmed for me, uh, Tom, that 1,949 migrants were processed. That's not even 2,000, and there's 14,000 under that bridge. There's only 50 to 60 porta potties under that bridge, a hygiene nightmare. How are they going to get this under control, even if they have a six-point plan, which includes, among other things, 400 agents to be surged to that location, bringing in ICE to move migrants to other processing centers and to work with transit countries to try and take these people back? Because of their ridiculous policies, because of their bad decisions, because of their incompetence, they're going to pull more law enforcement off the border to the processing facilities, which means the borders even can be more vulnerable. 40% of border patrol is off the line. Now they're gonna get 50 or 60% off the line, which is gonna drive the cartels and move more fentanyl, traffic more women and children, and, 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 and God help us, a terrorist coming into this country because the border is less protected. One thing we haven't talked about is 350,000 gotaways. 350,000 people have entered this country illegally, were not arrested because the border patrol is overwhelmed. And what are they going to do? They're going to take more agents off the line, which means less arrests, to deal with this crisis that they created. This is a national security issue. So how are they going to fix it? They, I got no problem to transport them to other facilities across the country to, de, to, to process. But the follow-up is detain and remove. And that's something this administration hasn't done. They've worked really hard at releasing people quickly into the United States because they think that's the next batch of Democratic voters in the future that right. we counted the next census. This is about this is about their political future rather than securing the well, United States, which is their oath, which is their duty. So, Tom, they put in the plan that they're accelerating the uh, repatriation uh, flights to Haiti. But at the end of May, this administration reinstated TPS, temporary protective status. Was that not a, mis a mistake to invite even more that we see now to come? Absolutely, Griff. It's always a sleight of hand. Right, they're, they're, they, they announced the other day, well, we only got 208,000 encounters. That's down 4,000 from the 212. But they're lying because, yeah, they got 208,000 encounters. It's because they got less people on the border mm. arresting people, so there's less encounters. But what they fail to talk about is less encounters means more gotaways because they're taking law enforcement away from law enforcement yeah. duties. They already shut down enforcement checkpoints. They're already shutting down ICE in their operations. This is, this is lawless. This is the first administration in my lifetime that is actively facilitating illegal immigration in this country. They all need to go. This has this is put this country at, secure, at, at, at an immense crisis, not only a humanitarian crisis, not just an immigration crisis, not, plus, not just a public health crisis because of COVID coming across that border. It's a national security crisis. We no longer have control of this border. All right, Tom Homan, thank you for sharing your insight. It's just, I've never seen it like this, and I know you haven't either no. in that six-point plan. They ended by saying the Biden administration has reiterated that our borders are not open. It appears that they are, based on the images we're seeing. Tom Homan, thank you very much. Jackie? And you can see right there, there's a weird dam out my right side, and they're just going back and forth to Mexico. Well, that path is, is an actual drag road, if that's what you're talking about. And that's a, a drag road that uh, we used uh, before all this happened here. Uh, basically, they get dragged uh, every day. And that way, we can check for foot signs uh, throughout the day, mornings and throughout the day, for illegal crossers if they cross in the dirt.
but you can see the weird data right there, the amount of people that are coming across Mexico right now. And then they get on the, uh, the drag road and head straight to the processing uh, bridge right there. Can you see the weird data right up there? And it is not just Abbott. Top leaders at all levels in Texas are talking border security. During an interview on Fox News last night, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick suggested the recent influx of migrants is a political ploy on the part of Democrats to secure a voting majority in the future. Patrick said millions of migrants could have, quote, two or three children, adding, quote, who do you think they're going to vote for? And this is trying to take over our country without firing a shot. KXAN's politics reporter Daniel Marin is joining us now to dig a little deeper into all of this. Good evening. Good evening. And the Texas AFL-CIO today condemned Patrick's uh, comments, calling them, quote, the essence of white supremacy. And the Texas Democratic Party called his remarks, quote, racist conspiracy theories. Now, the lieutenant governor wouldn't comment on that with us today, so we took some time to zoom in on his key argument. I spoke with a pair of academics about the voting habits of foreign-born Latinos and their children. Latinx immigrants, they care about bread and butter economic issues, um, and they perceive that Democrats offer policies that would relatively benefit their economic interests. Marcel Roman studies Latino political behavior in UT Austin's government department. Roman was part of a post-2016 election study at UCLA that included about 3,000 Latino respondents, and it found about 60% of foreign-born Latinos lean Democratic, 20% toward Republican ideology, and 20% are more independent. Roman says those numbers remain basically unchanged when it comes to first and second generation U.S. born children of immigrants. But it's not a guarantee that Latinx immigrants will always vote for the Democratic Party. There's nothing intrinsic to the character of Latinx immigrants that makes them predisposed to support Democrats. An idea backed up by data gathered by the Texas Politics Project. They conduct statewide polling of registered voters. Republicans have been increasingly competitive with Latino voters, particularly in Texas, where statewide candidates have received 40 percent or more of the Latino vote. Still, Roman says voter outreach remains important. The data also shows, on average, that Latinos are much more likely to be contacted and mobilized by Democratic Party officials and canvassers. It also doesn't help that, you know, in the contemporary moment, the Republican Party does tend to engage in explicitly xenophobic and anti-immigrant rhetoric. And again, we reached out to the lieutenant governor's office for an interview or a written statement, but we have yet to hear back. Back to you. Incredible reporting by Bill Malusian down there in the images you just saw. For more on the crisis at our border, we're joined now by Republican Congressman from Texas and member of the House Transportation Infrastructure Committee, Troy Nails. He also serves on the House Veterans Affairs Committee. Congressman, you just heard and saw the report there from our own Bill Malusian. Just incredible stuff. As he pointed out, it's something I've never seen before. He's never seen before. And I've been covering the border for more than a decade. I want for our viewers to get some context. You came and joined me back in April, some five months ago, in that same very area, Del Rio, Texas. Here is what we uh, saw and what you told me then. Listen. The Border Patrol can't handle all the children. There are thousands of them entering our country, and now they're being sprinkled throughout Texas. And pretty soon they're going to come to a neighborhood in a small town, a small community near you. Congressman, it's not under control. It's gotten worse. Why? Well, uh, thank you for having me, Griff. It's because there's a crisis at our southern border. Remember, DHS Secretary Mayorkas said the border's closed. That's a downright lie. He's in denial. But understand this. This administration, this president, has been coaxing people to enter our southern border for the last nine months and even prior to his uh, inauguration. When he was a candidate, he was encouraging people to enter our southern border. And now we've had people from well over 100 countries uh, 1.2 million people enter our southern border, and he's telling those people, come on in, the border's open. Oh, by the way, don't worry about COVID, whether you have it or whether you don't. Don't worry about any other type of disease, because once you get here, we're not going to test you. The testing and the mandatory vaccines and stuff, 
only apply the travel restrictions, only apply to the American people. We'll make sure it doesn't apply to you. And, and don't worry about having any money because we'll take care of you there. We're going to line your pockets with some cash. We're going to make sure that you're able to participate with some of our programs here. We're going to educate your children. We're even mm. going to educate your kids going to college. Yeah. We're going to educate your kids going to college. And I am, don't remember, no, no, don't forget who I am. My name is Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Congressman, uh, you mentioned the uh, administration coaxing people, inviting people to come, and Bill Malusian was saying in his report that many of these Haitians had left Haiti long ago. They chose to come now. I would submit to you, in the end of May, this administration reinstated the TPS, Temporary Protective Status, for Haitians. It had been lifted in 2017. Do you believe that was a mistake and part of the problem? Of course. And, and, and you also got to look at why are these people coming from countries around the world? Griff, we're spending trillions of dollars in Washington. We're going to do everything we can mm. to find a pathway to citizenship. We're going to make sure that we encourage them to come here because we're going to let you participate. We're going to give you health care, education. He's doing this. This is an orchestrated plan by this administration because you know they want to give everyone a pathway to citizenship. And this administration has put the American people last. He is doing mm. more for the migrants underneath the bridge in Del Rio than he is for the people under the bridges in Washington, D.C., Houston, and Baltimore, the homeless. Yep. And many of those are veterans and they're Americans. It's well, disgusting. That's an interesting point. Congressman Troy Nails, thank you for taking time. You talked about spending trillions. We'll have you back again after you guys start tackling that infrastructure bill. Congressman, thank you very much. If someone's afraid to return to their country, they may be able to start the asylum process. Hey, views Erica Proffer explains how it works. The Immigration and Nationality Act shows anyone can apply for asylum. They need to be physically present in the United States. It doesn't matter how someone got here. Most of the folks who are here undocumented are on expired visas. It's not the ones caught crossing illegally, not those under the bridge in Del Rio, Texas. There are two main ways to go through the asylum process, affirmative and defensive. Affirmative is for someone who is already here. They do not go through immigration court. It's an interview with an asylum officer. Defensive is for someone who is in a removal proceeding. They may be placed there by an asylum officer, have immigration violations, or like what we're seeing right now in Del Rio, folks who cross either without documents or cross illegally. Let's talk about that defensive side. Those in federal custody must first pass a credible or reasonable fear interview. They have to prove why they can't go back to their home country. If they pass, they must fill out this I-589 form, all 12 pages, in English only. The immigration judge will review it during a person's court hearing. The court system is backed up. I have clients who have been in proceedings now for going on 10 years, since 2012. Kate Lake and Goldfitch is an immigration attorney in Austin. Asylum seekers who come and ask for help or who are caught crossing and placed in deportation proceedings go into the same court system as immigrants who are caught in a work raid or who are pulled over for driving without a license and placed in a deportation proceeding. Bottom line, the folks that you see under the bridge, if they have credible or reasonable fear, they are here legally. In the meantime, if released, they are able to petition for a work permit and pay taxes. In Austin, America proper. And in the last hour, we reported there were at least 13,000 migrants, perhaps, at that bridge uh, in Del Rio, Texas. We want to go back for an update with uh, Bill Malugin uh, in Del Rio. Bill. Charles, good morning to you. What we are witnessing right now is absolutely remarkable. What you're looking at is the United States side of the Rio Grande right now, where you can see a mass of hundreds, maybe even a thousand migrants there who have illegally crossed the Rio Grande from Mexico. We're going to pan to the right so you can see the situation live right now. There is a steady stream of hundreds of these migrants just walking across a dam in the Rio Grande. What you're looking at right here on this right side, this is the Mexican side of the river. This is Ciudad Acuna. This is where all of those migrants are, are being dropped off on buses, taxis. We don't know where they're coming from, but they're being dropped off by the busloads, by the hundreds up there in that Mexican neighborhood. 
and you can see they make their way down here to the banks of the Rio Grande. We'll pan back over to the left once again. They just walk across the Rio Grande. You can see the International Bridge in the background. That's the bridge where there are currently upwards of 13,000 migrants under the bridge. The reason that number keeps shooting up like a rocket ship is because of this situation. It does not matter how many people Border Patrol buses out from under the bridge when you have this situation happening constantly every day. These crowds have gotten bigger and bigger. We showed it live from the helicopter yesterday. It wasn't this big. I mean, there's got to be... We're probably looking at at least a thousand people between that grouping on the, the shore over there, over into the dirt path and the brush, crossing the river, and then up here in this Mexican neighborhood. And this is nonstop. You can see some people are just going back and forth between Mexico and the United States, some of them bringing food, some of them bringing, bringing clothes. And there's no resistance on either side of the border. There's nobody on the Mexican side stopping this. There's nobody on the U.S. side stopping this. And quite frankly, I don't even know how they would even try to start it when you have this many people. The Border Patrol certainly doesn't have the manpower to do this, but this is why the International Port of Entry has been closed, because of this constantly deteriorating situation. Think about it. Wednesday morning, there were about 4,000 people under the International Bridge. It has now swelled to over about 13,000. That is a significant multiplication, more than four times in just a few days, and this is why it's happening. I mean, these, these images here are remarkable. Have the drone. Okay, I want to go to our live drone right now so you can see what, what you, you see the situation under the bridge. You see how crowded it is under there. You see how it keeps getting worse each day. What we were just showing you here on the river, all these people are going to be walking over to that bridge. They're already running out of room over there. And you can imagine how bad this is going to get. These poor Border Patrol agents do not have the manpower to deal with this right now. It's unclear what they're going to do because. This mass of people, it, 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 it gets bigger every single day. And when they keep getting dropped off in Mexico by the bus load, it's just constantly refreshing the population. So no matter how many people Border Patrol is able to take out on buses, there's more and more and more people coming in. And these images are just remarkable. We saw this from the helicopter yesterday. Actually being here in person, um, it, it, it looks like almost like a refugee camp from another country. I mean, this does not look like uh, the United States or an international border here. I, I, again, we don't see any any immigration or border officials on either side of the border. What we do see are hundreds of these migrants just crossing the river. Again, many of them are from Haiti. A, 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 a majority of them were from Haiti at the start. We've heard there are some from the uh, countries in Africa as well, Senegal, Angola. Um, the word is apparently out that this is this is where you cross. You take a bus up here to Ciudad Acuna, and then you just walk down, come across this, this dam right here, and you're in the United States. And the thing is about all those people under the bridge, we're told by Border Patrol, they're not detained. They're just hanging out under there for shade and shelter, waiting to be processed by Border Patrol. The, they're not processed by Border Patrol until they're taken on a bus to a processing center and the paperwork is done. So all those people are free to go which is why you see them kind of going back and forth between Mexico and the United States. Um, we'll go ahead and send it back to you, but th these images are, are pretty stunning here from the border. Yeah, Bill, they certainly are. Thank you very much. Um, now we'll switch. Yeah, those agents are currently uh, overwhelmed, I think would probably be a fair statement. Uh, would it not be, John? That's, uh, that's an understatement. I don't even know what to describe it at this point. Um, as, as, I understand number, it, you've I been, as I understand it, you've been a Border Patrol agent for, for 14 and a half years. You ever seen anything like this? No, and you bring people down here who have been in for 20 or 25 years, and they're speechless because they've also never seen anything like this. D describe, and this is what I'm most interested in, is we're looking at pictures of, of this group of people there. We understand it's 12,000 Haitians, at least that's the reporting. Do we have any idea who these people really are? Not yet, and uh, I came from the bridge about an hour and a half ago, and it's uh, thirteen thousand seven hundred or so. So it continues to increase throughout the day. Uh, we no, don't when know you say continuing to point. increase, is that just because there's just this flow of people walking, literally across the Rio Grande River? That's exactly it. They're just walking across, and we can only move so many at a time. So we might move three hundred, but then two thousand will show up, and we just can't get ahead of it. Wow. Okay. So now you say. You move 300, where do you move them to? What do you do with them? So they're trying to move them to any Border Patrol station or sector that has room. Here at Del Rio sector, we're maxed out. We've been maxed out our capacity for months now. So they're trying to either make room or find other locations that have space. Uh, and frankly, everyone is kind of approaching capacity at this point. So they're just going to put them wherever we can 
uh, to figure out what is the what processing is going to take place, whether they're going but, to be released in the U.S. or maybe sent back to Haiti. So fair, fair enough to say a lot of them could be released in the U.S. You say Haiti, and I'm interested in this. Uh, we we have a map to sort of show the relationship here of Haiti to Del Rio, uh, which is an awfully long way. It's a couple of thousand miles uh, across the Caribbean, the the Caribbean Sea, uh, and then into Mexico, and then up to the Del Rio area. Any idea how these people got there? So the vast majority make their way from Haiti over to South or Central America. And a lot of them have been living down there for years. And they just decided now is the opportunity to, to cross. So we've been seeing sort of a steady flow of Haitians coming up through Mexico, coming from South and Central America. And for whatever reason, a huge number just decided to go all at once. And here we are. Real quick, uh, obviously, America was built by immigrants, and uh, we all wouldn't be here without immigrants. All of our parents at one time or another were. But uh, do we have any idea? And so you don't want to in any way vilify people who are trying to come for a better life. Uh, but do we have any idea if they're mixed in with these 12,000 people or some really bad, bad actors? Are there some terrorists from Afghanistan? Or are there a bunch of cartel smugglers and gang members and everything else? We have no idea at this point. Okay. So we, we, whenever we take them to custody, we roll their fingerprints. We try and figure out who they are. But uh, at the moment, in this massive group of 13,000 something people, we just don't know who we're dealing with. All right. Hey, John, I know you and your agents are working uh, more than overtime. And uh, our thoughts, our prayers, and our thanks are with all of them. Welcome back to the Big Saturday Show. More than 14,000 migrants, most of them Haitian, are gathered under a Texas bridge waiting to be ushered into the U.S. An overwhelmed Border Patrol has temporarily closed the Del Rio border in an effort to deal with the surge. Bill Malugin is in Del Rio. Bill, what have you seen over the last few days? It's yeah, Iris, good evening to you. What we've seen is a situation that continues to deteriorate, really not by the day, but by the hour. And we want to show you what that looks like. So take a live look at our Fox drone right now, which is overhead of the International Bridge here in Del Rio. Law enforcement sources telling me the number of migrants under that bridge right now pushing closer to 15,000, which is remarkable when you think about the fact that just a few days ago on Wednesday, the numbers were just around 4,000. We're now pushing almost four times that in just a matter of days. As you mentioned, Law enforcement and Border Patrol down here completely overwhelmed. They do not have the manpower to be processing this many migrants, most of them from Haiti, but we're also starting to see a lot of Africans starting to come over. I'm told they're from Ghana, Senegal, Angola, places like that, and they've been coming across all day long, which is why the size keeps growing. Take a look at this piece of video we shot on the river earlier today. Exclusive video you're not going to see anywhere else. We were able to get out on a boat on the Rio Grande, and we were watching for hours long as migrants were streaming in from Ciudad Acuna on the Mexican side of the border, walking across the Rio Grande using a dam and then illegally entering the United States. There were hundreds of them crammed on the United States shoreline. Some of them were bathing in the water, changing their clothes before they came in. But this was happening, I kid you not, nonstop all day long. There was never a break. It was a constant stream of people. It, it was pretty remarkable to watch. And that is why the situation at the bridge is not getting any better. We want to take you back out live once again to our Fox drone. Speaking of the situation at that bridge, what you see there are hundreds of law enforcement vehicles that have now been pulled up there. What I'm told is Texas DPS is doing a massive surge of state troopers to this location. Hundreds of state troopers showing up here, pulling into that international bridge area. I'm being told by sources this is just to be proactive for any potential security concerns because a group that big under that bridge, about 15,000. Just to wrap up, this is having a major impact on the local community. The Del Rio port of entry has been closed uh, for the foreseeable future. Anybody wanting to cross it legally now has to drive 57 miles to the east. And a local congressman here, Tony Gonzalez, is reporting that local grocery stores are starting to run uh, run low on food and some local restaurants have now been asked to close early and make food for the migrants under the bridge. So this is not just an isolated incident under the bridge that's being kept in a bubble. It's spilling over. It's having an impact on this tiny Del Rio community here in Texas as this situation continues to spiral out of control. We'll send it back to you. Bill, quick question. Do you get a sense for the, the morale or how much tension is going on between border patrols and people in the community? Would you say it's at a, at a, a red level or are they handling it well? 
It's been at an all time high for quite some time now. You talk to any Border Patrol agent, they've already been frustrated with the surge that's been going on. You throw this into the mix now, it, it, you're, as you said, it's, it's blinking red. Those agents down there, they don't have the manpower to deal with this. Their holding centers out here are completely over capacity. You got maybe 100 or 200 agents down there having to deal with 15,000 people. It's not fair to them. They don't have the infrastructure out here. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to get better anytime soon because of what you saw in that river. There are more coming every hour, every day. Wow. It's just unbelievable what those what those men and women are going through down there. Tammy, I, I throw this to you. You're, you've seen this. You've covered this. Walk us through this. Where do, where do you even go to even give someone down there on the border a vote of confidence of how to handle this? Because there's literally no support coming uh, from the administration. Well, They're on vacation. It's anarchy. It's anarchy. Americans are seeing this. The other problem we have, of course, is that with Afghanistan, there's been a, a boost of inspiration for the cells that we know are throughout America, South Central America, Europe, of Al Qaeda, certainly of Hamas. Uh, and so we're looking at such a number of people that it is not just security if the, if the mob gets crazy, but of course, if there are terrorists, other uh, cartel dynamics involved there. So there's massive national security implications here as well. These are mostly Haitians. And now others from other than Mexico, other than South America, coming over. And then we have no idea what's going on during a pandemic. So it's not just, of course, regular terrorism, but the, vi the variety of things that could be happening health-wise, like measles, as is already now the case here in America, because of the Afghan refugees. So uh, it's a very uh, dangerous situation with uh, serious national security implications. Carly, the, here's one of the numbers. Let me just throw this at you. One, there's over 1.5 million what they would describe wow. as border encounters. What do you think that means to the the regular guy who's flipping on the channel when you hear border encounters? Is that just a polite way yeah. of saying that people are getting away, arresting? I mean, what do you think that even well, embodies? Yeah. That number, to me, um, proves what Bill was saying about how overworked Border Patrol is. And this situation is a humanitarian crisis. The, these people don't have adequate food or water. The mayor was saying that some women are giving birth under the bridge. And, it, and it's so sad, because you have to think about how desperate these people are to be uh, putting themselves in that situation to get into this country. But our country, like all countries, has laws. We have borders for a reason. And, and Tammy is right. The situation in Africa Afghanistan and the situation at the border, they're linked because there will be a rise in terrorism as our border is the weakest it's been in a very long time. You know, when you, Raymond, when you think of this, I think about a giant dam and like sticking your finger in the crack trying to hold back uh, yeah. this massive humanity. When you think of the administration, in particular, uh, our vice president who was in charge of this, how would you rate her performance? thus far. Missing in action, Tyrus. Missing in action. She's at a, a Howard University game today. She should be down at the border patrolling this thing. Look, I, I've spent months down there back and forth covering this border, including that Del Rio sector. I was there over the summer. Let me tell you, what happened here is the Remain in, po in Mexico policy fell apart. Biden tore it down. Then he tried to reassemble it. Mexico obviously is not cooperating anymore. They're letting anybody through, including the cartels. Now these Haitians from Chile and and God knows who else is coming across the border. We should lock the whole thing down today and stop this, because our agents are not only mm -hmm. trying to process these 15,000 people under this bridge, there are hundreds still coming on rafts and across the low tide of the Rio Grande as we speak. This is a national and international tragedy, and the Biden administration is largely responsible. They'd better get control of our borders, Tyrus. Yeah. Prices at the border, thousands of Haitian migrants waiting to be detained by border agents. Governor Greg Abbott saying law enforcement along the border is overwhelmed. Our Bill Barajas live outside a Customs and Border Protection office in southeast Houston with the very latest. Bill? Well, as you mentioned, the situation at uh, the border right now is being called a crisis by officials there in Del Rio, Border Patrol agents, other federal agents and local law enforcement all overwhelmed by the thousands of uh, migrants from Haiti that are seeking entry into the U.S. and seeking a better life. And you can see right there, there's a weird dam out my right side, and they're just going back and forth to Mexico. This is what the situation looks like from up above. Thousands of people carrying food, water, and ice. 
to what has now become a tent city. 12,500 Haitian immigrants camped out at the U.S.-Mexico border just outside of Del Rio. You're going to have to start turning around. The situation forcing Homeland Security officials to shut down the Del Rio International Bridge and border crossing. The Del Rio mayor declaring a local disaster declaration. This is no longer sustainable, acceptable. What's happening now in real time is the, 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 the migrants are getting agitated. The Border Patrol can't keep up with, with feeding um, during lunchtime. The facilities, the quality of life, the standard of living is all being stretched beyond its capabilities. Texas Governor Greg Abbott calling out the Biden administration and signing a $1.8 billion bill funding border security in the state. The Biden administration's open border policies have opened the floodgates to illegal immigration, to crime, to human trafficking, to drug smuggling. These funds will help the Texas Department of Public Safety arrest more people at the border. They will help the National Guard to secure the Texas border. They will increase funding to build the border wall. And the Department of Homeland Security said about 2,000 migrants have already been taken for that, from that camp for processing and removal. We're also told about 400 federal agents and local law enforcement are being sent to the area to help those already on the ground that, as we mentioned, are overwhelmed at this point. Live in Southeast Houston, Bill Barajas, KPRC, 2 News. Bill, thank you. The Biden administration is planning to begin flying thousands of Haitian migrants back to their home country on Sunday after they showed up in tiny Del Rio, Texas. And that's where we find Bill Malusian with the latest on the ongoing surge and now a budding public health crisis there at the border. Hey, Bill, what can you tell us? Jackie, this is a crisis in every way, shape and form. We are live on the Rio Grande right now on a boat. We want to show you what we're looking at. Take a look at this. This is Ciudad Acuna. This is Mexico right here where we have been watching a steady stream of hundreds of migrants crossing the Rio Grande illegally. Brian will pan left here. They're crossing the Rio Grande illegally over a dam and they are slowly walking over to the United States where there is a massive crowd of these migrants who have gathered. They go over there, they bathe in the river, they change their clothes and then they walk down a dirt path towards where that international bridge is. Some border patrol agents and Texas state troopers just pulled up on the other side over there. You might not be able to see them, but they're, they've got their lights and sirens on over there. There's a Texas state trooper vehicle pulling up. Earlier, there was nothing, but this is a remarkable scene here showing just how much this uh, situation down here is deteriorating. Uh, let's take a live look at our Fox drone right now, which is over the international bridge, which is where this crisis first started. Sources are telling me the number of migrants under that bridge has now swelled to more than 14,000. Consider that on Wednesday morning, it was just over 4,000. So these numbers are absolutely exploding. And the reason why that's happening is what you just saw in the river right here. These migrants continue to show up by the hundreds pretty much every single hour. These Border Patrol agents are completely overwhelmed. It doesn't matter how many of them are bussed out. Fox's Griff Jenkins uh, reporting that about 1,900 migrants were processed here just in the last 24 hours. That's not going to cut it when you got 14,000 under the bridge with more coming. How are they supposed to keep up with that? This is not only a humanitarian crisis, it's a crisis in every way, shape and form, a public health crisis. Again, most of these uh, migrants coming through are from Haiti. That's a country with a vaccination rate of less than 1%. And again, what we're seeing on the other side of uh, the river in Mexico right now, again, that Ciudad Acuna, you see all the people gathered up there. What's going on? is people are being taxied up there and dropped off into that residential neighborhood by the uh, by the hundreds and they're actually being bussed up to northern mexico in massive buses we have a contact on the mexican side of the border who's been sending video to us showing massive bus loads of these migrants moving north and then they all take taxi cabs and they all find their way to that neighborhood up there where you can see they gather they get their supplies together they walk down to the edge of the river right here and then they cross the river. And what's ironic about this is, Brian, let's, that's, uh, if we can zoom in on the bridge, that is the international port of entry up there. That's where if people want to claim asylum, that's where they are legally supposed to present themselves. You'll notice there are no cars driving up or down that bridge right now. That's because yesterday, because of this situation, CBP announced that effective immediately, that port of entry here in Del Rio is closed. Anybody driving on it will now have to go 57 miles to the east 
to Eagle Pass, Texas, and that's having an impact on legal migration. We left our hotel this morning and the front desk told us uh, several of their housekeepers couldn't show up to work today because they drive in from Mexico and they couldn't get across the port of entry. These are people crossing legally, going through the port of entry legally. Americans go into Mexico, Mexicans come into the United States. Well, they can no longer do that because of what you're looking at right here, illegal migration. That's the consequences of what's going on here. This situation has completely spiraled out of control. We got here two days ago. It has only gotten significantly worse. It is. Honestly, it's just stunning to witness what we're watching here on this river because we've been here for two hours now, almost two hours, and this line of people hasn't stopped. There's been no breaks, no breaks in people coming across. It is a constant line of people. And that is why the bridge situation is untenable right now. It's why they, they, they cannot keep up with what's going on. And let's, Brian, if we, sorry to keep turning you around, my friend, but if we can pan over to the left side, to the American side one more time, you can see there's Texas State Troopers back there through the crowd. They've got some of their lights on. They just started showing up. And these images are just remarkable because there are, I, I don't even know how to count all these folks because I can't see what's beyond this embankment here, but that, there's that dirt path where they all walk on and they all end up at that international bridge. And what's striking about this is these people are not being detained. They're just waiting under the bridge because it provides shade and it provides shelter. They have not been processed yet. They're free to go. You see some of them walking back no, into right Mexico. There. Pardon? No, right there, yeah, some of them go back and forth into Mexico to go get food, that sort of a thing. They're only processed once they're placed on Border Patrol buses and taken to a holding facility or a processing facility once they get their paperwork done. As you can see here, None of that is happening. So all these people, they're not detained. They're free to come and go wherever they want. And it's just wild to watch people coming back and forth between the United States by the hundreds. This does not look like an international border of the United States. There is no resistance on either side. And, um, you know, I know, I know, I know you're anchoring with, with Griff Jenkins there. It is just, he's been down here at the border many, many times. And uh, it's one of the most remarkable things I think he and myself have ever seen. It, yeah. it's, we'll send it back to you. Well, Bill, I want to ask you because we were speaking yesterday uh, in the afternoon show and you were up in the Texas uh, DPS helicopter and you showed us those incredible images of just more than, I think, 10,000 people you mentioned gathering under that bridge. And there was a concern there weren't even enough, uh, like, uh, porta potties and facilities for all of these people who were gathered there. Um, has that changed? Have they brought in any uh, assistance for people? Yeah, so Griff was reporting that uh, a little while ago, a couple days ago, there were only 20 porty potties. I think he's reporting now, I saw one of his tweets that it's now between 50 and 60, but that ain't gonna cut it when you've got 14,000 people under there and more coming here by the minute. And what's remarkable is just the fact that we're not seeing any resistance on the Mexican side whatsoever. You, you might remember when we had live shots in previous months, when there was a group of 100 that crossed the river and we did live shots, all of a sudden, the Mexican Marines showed up and they plugged that area up and the migrants stopped for a little bit. Well, we got thousands coming through here and there is no resistance whatsoever. We haven't seen any Mexican police, no Mexican immigration officials. We don't have any border patrol agents who are able to man this side of the river. They're completely overwhelmed right now. Del Rio is a smaller sector. They don't have the infrastructure to, to support this. And uh, it, it's, it's just wild to think about how, how is this going to improve in the short term? They don't have the holding facilities out here. They don't have the manpower to deal with this. And any busloads of migrants they take out from under the bridge are immediately being replaced by this never ending stream of migrants. Again, most of them are from Haiti. However, we've been told by sources there are a lot more Africans starting to show up from countries like Senegal and Angola. So these folks are coming in literally from all over the world. And I've seen a lot of people on Twitter asking, well, how the heck are they getting here? Um, are they taking flights? I can tell you for the Haitians, Many of them that I've talked to say they left Haiti years ago. They've been living in countries like Chile or Brazil for a while, and they've decided now is the time they're going to try to come here. Wow. We'll go ahead and send it back to you. Thank you, Bill. And I remember you said yesterday there were taxi cabs full of migrants showing up uh, on the Mexican side close to where you were standing. Yep, and right just up there. some interesting uh, details you gave us from that report. Thank you so much. Yep. Griff. The number of migrants living under a Del Rio, Texas bridge is now more than 14,000, according to CBP agents on the ground. The mass of people who are mostly Haitian immigrants began arriving at the U.S. border in droves on Tuesday. 
Today, the Department of Homeland Security announced a plan to bring them home. News Nation's Michael Shore joins us live in Los Angeles with details. Michael, good evening to you. Good evening, Aaron. That's right. The, the Homeland Security Department is now t saying that they are going to start ramping up the numbers of these deportation flights that will fly these migrants back to Haiti. Most of them are from Haiti, some from Cuba and Venezuela. And of course, you know, I've spent some time on that southern border. There are migrants from everywhere, but the ones that have camped out under that international bridge that separates Del Rio, Texas from Acuna, Mexico, are Haitian immigrants and or migrants, and they're going to be sent back. Those flights uh, have been have been cut off since the earthquake there on August 14th. They've resumed now and they say that they're ramping them up to eight this week and then 10 flights in the ensuing week uh, to see if that helps to stem the tide there. But they are leery in the Haitian community. I spoke with James Pierre, a journalist who covers uh, sort of all things Haitian, but especially immigration. Having these Haitians going back to Haiti, it's like a nightmare. Remember, 75% of the Haitian population now living with less than two US dollars a day. Many of these immigrants right now, they don't have a home in Haiti. They don't have a place to go. And, and that's a big problem, obviously. Uh, and and the, the, the glut of migrants in, you know, underneath that bridge in Del Rio is also causing these lateral flights. They're not talked about as much, but the U.S. government and the Homeland Security Department set, sending some of those other Haitians to different immigration points along the southern border. So they could be flown to California, where I am. They could be flown to other parts of Texas, to Arizona, New Mexico. They're going to try and disperse those numbers that are there, Aaron. Michael, before you go, we heard from Senator Ted Cruz yesterday here on News Nation, very upset, pointing the finger at the Democratic Party. What are you hearing from lawmakers about what is happening there on the border? Well, yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, the lawmakers, obviously, Republicans are upset with what's gone on. They say this is Biden administration policy. They're talking about the fact that it may be open borders and open season. But the mere fact is uh, that this, these numbers were not anticipated. They came very quickly. Uh, here are some of those lawmakers or perhaps even Senator Ted Cruz talking a little bit about what's upsetting them. This is a disaster. And it is a man-made disaster. It is the result of political decisions, and Joe Biden could end this tomorrow by simply following the law. Now, I'm not sure that uh, Joe Biden and the administration, that was from Thursday when Ted Cruz was there in Del Rio. I don't think they listened to Ted Cruz and made this change happen. Uh, a lot of this has to do with the fact that these flights, these deportation flights from Texas of those Haitians were ceased because of that earthquake. Haiti could not have the infrastructure to take these people back. Now they've resumed, uh, the president says, because of the fact the numbers are so high, but they do have the infrastructure to accept these flights now in Haiti. Aaron? Hey, very quickly before you go, Michael, a question for myself. I want to make sure that I understand this. How are these people from Haiti getting to the border? Well, you know, it, it's really interesting. A lot of them left. They fled Haiti to other parts of South America. Many of these migrants have made this treacherous pass uh, through, uh, you know, who have been living in, let's say, Brazil, Paraguay, uh, Argentina, making this pass all the way up through Central America to try and get to the United States. Some of these other countries have less stringent border control, a lot easier to pass by boat into some of these South American countries and then sort of migrate down. Well, now they're migrating back up because because the word was that the borders were open. Now the Biden administration, Biden administration saying, no, in fact, the borders are not open and you're going home. Texas Republican Congresswoman Beth, Dan, Beth Van Dyne joins us now. She's a member of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee and former mayor of Irving, Texas. Um, you know, re Representative, how can Border Patrol officials get a handle on things? How much help do they need and what kind of help do they need? Well, they need a lot of help. They need a lot of resources that has been denied to them since day one of Biden's presidency. They've been asking for more help, and what they've seen is their resources are dwindling. And you've got an administration who's not even willing to get down there, acknowledge that there's a problem, or find any solutions for them. And what Every do you day think is the solution? What is the, what is the solution, Congresswoman? What kind of help do they need? 
for, for the administration to take this seriously and to stop inviting people to come over here to well, stop okay, we, I, Listen, we, we're not saying, Congresswoman, listen, I, I don't want to talk about the politics of it. Of course, there are some politics involved. And I don't have the other side here, so I can't just let you say that they're inviting them to come. What I want to know from you, especially your former mayor of Irving, Texas, you're down there. You know that area. What kind of help is... I wouldn't say sufficient, but what 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 kind of help would some will somehow relieve what is happening happening there? Clearly, there is a crisis at the border. Clearly, there's a crisis at the border, and when I say that they're inviting people in, what I'm telling you is that Biden last week was telling them was telling the world that they're not going to be deporting Haitians that are coming over into Del Rio right now. What they need is they need resources. They need agents that are down there. Instead of being at these detention facilities where they're acting as babysitters, they need to put them back where they belong, which is on the border, which is bordering, um, which, is, which is holding the border and making sure that their people are not, as you have seen, freely coming over. They're going back and forth. Our laws are not being enforced. So I don't know that that's political, as you've heard from the Del Rio mayor. It's not political. He's a Democrat. He's saying my city is in desperate need right now of some control. We have to have borders. We have to make sure that the people who are coming in here are legally doing it in an orderly fashion. And right now they're having their their city completely overrun. As you, you are a hundred percent. Listen, Congresswoman, you are a hundred percent right about what you're saying. That is just unacceptable what we're seeing there. So I'm not uh, definitely not disputing you at all on that. Listen, let me play some sound from Secretary Jen Psaki uh, from Thursday. She was discussing this topic. Let's take a listen, then we'll talk about it. We are still taking steps or focused on taking steps to address the root causes of migration, implement orderly asylum processes, strengthen collaborative migration management efforts in the region, uh, and effectively secure our borders. Um, we feel we've, making, we've made uh, considerable progress on that front. Now I got to tell you, it does sound like talking points. I mean, this humanitarian crisis at hand uh, drives the need to expedite processing. But, you know, what kind of problems could crop up when you try to quickly register these migrants there in Del Rio, Texas, Congresswoman? Well, as you're saying, you're saying massive amounts of people come. They don't have the, the means to be able to process them, which is why, you know, under the last administration, having to be able to do it from the first safe country they got into was much better than what you're seeing with these massive surges at the border. And thank goodness that the state of Texas is actually taking it seriously and is sending, you know, sending people down there. They're talking about building a wall. You know, we have a lot of people coming back up, and you've got an administration who's not only willing to not see it, not talk about it, not provide solutions, but they're actually trying to, to make sure that the rest of the world can't see it. I mean, you've seen how they're trying to outlaw even having drones so you can't even see pictures. I've got people who are down there right now, I've got my colleagues who are down there in Del Rio right now, now sending all of us photos. And what you see is heartbreaking. I mean, there are women who are giving birth under that bridge right now. And the weather's coming in poorly. They don't have enough food. They don't have enough clothing. They don't have any medical, medical equipment down there. It is horrific what is happening. They need to have resources. Instead of pulling resources away from Customs and Border Protection, which is what we have seen to date, you need to make sure that they have the resources that they need, that you're responding to the needs of the state and to the pleas of this mayor in Del Rio, who is seeing firsthand on the ground what's happening to his city as it's being invaded by folks coming over illegally and an administration who is willing to even acknowledge it. Um, listen, it, 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 when you see these pictures, it really it's mind boggling. So a couple of questions come to mind that I think people are asking and in their heads too. How, literally, how did these migrants get to our southern border and where do they go now? It's a great question about how they got there. It seems like it's an organized fashion. I don't know how so many people all at once. I do know that it was since the, um, 2018, you've seen a thousand percent increase um, in the people. We had, what, four, 420 that were coming over. We now have 42,000 that are coming over. Um, it seems as if it's immediate. And the question is, what do we do with them now that they're there? We understand that they are sending them by, by buses, by planes to cities throughout the U.S. 85% of them are never going to come back and actually complete their court dates. They will be put into the U.S. We'll have no idea where they go, um, who's coming into our city. It is, a, it is a national security issue, and we need to take it seriously. This administration has got to get down there, acknowledge that it is a disaster what's happening, that it is a humanity crisis, and has got to start putting toward the resources and even acknowledging that it is a problem. It is a massive scale. 
Again, uh, Congresswoman Beth Van Dyne, I am not suggesting that uh, you are strictly trying to be political. I just want to make sure that we stick to, you know, realizing you're right. It's not Democratic or Republican problem. This is an American problem. We have to work together to try to solve it. So that's all I was saying, because once we start kind of pecking no, at each other or any implication of it, people, you know, kind of drone out and, and, and zone out and don't listen. But it's a problem that has to be taken care of. And Congresswoman Beth uh, Van Dyne, we uh, uh, wish you well and whatever you can do to help this administration get this taken care of. Thank you very much, Congresswoman Thank Van you. Dyne. Take care. The migrant surge in Del Rio, Texas, is getting so bad they closed the bridge migrants were camping out under. Bill Malugin is in Del Rio, Texas, with the very latest. Bill. Yeah, Charles, good morning to you. Right now, we are live to you on a boat in the middle of the Rio Grande. We are heading to that international bridge right now. As we're on the way, take a look at what we come across here. This is just one of many spots here in the Rio Grande where you will see every morning, every night, uh, migrants just crossing back and forth between the U.S. and Mexico. We're going to keep our shots a little wider, not get too tight, because many of these migrants are nude and bathing in the river right now. But we've been watching it for the better part of the last 45 minutes. You'll see the right side where you're looking right now, that is Ciudad Acuna, that is Mexico, and we've got these migrants leaving Mexico, walking across the shallow Rio Grande and just uh, illegally entering the United States where they congregate and they walk further into the United States to where that bridge is. Speaking of which, take a look at this. We got our live drone back up over that bridge right now. Stunning images. Yesterday, the numbers under that bridge were a little over 11,000. I'm told by sources this morning it has now topped over 13,000. More migrants have been showing up to that bridge every hour, day in, day out. We showed it to you guys live on the uh, helicopter yesterday. Hundreds of migrants streaming in from Ciudad Acuna by the minute. You might be able to see in the drone shot that the bridge, there's no cars on it. The feds had to close down the port of entry because of what's going on underneath that bridge right now. And again, these are mostly Haitian migrants as well as some from Africa who are coming in. Border patrol is overwhelmed, doesn't have the infrastructure or the manpower to process them right now. So they're using that bridge as shade. You can see they're setting up tent structures, structures with sticks and plants. It has gotten significantly more packed down there. And then take a look at this photo right here. A border patrol source tells me who was at the bridge last night that they're so overwhelmed, they're now having to bring in school buses from the local school district here in Del Rio to put some of these migrants on to start getting them out of there. However many they are taking out on buses, whether it's Border Patrol buses or school buses, it's not stopping the flow because more people are replacing the people who are leaving and it's at a level they just cannot keep up with. Back out here live on the Rio Grande, you can see again, we're not even at the bridge right now. We're trying to get over to the area where there's a lot of activity. This is downriver and you'll find places like this all over the Rio Grande where people are crossing without any resistance whatsoever on uh, either side of the river. One last point to close out here at our hotel this morning as we were getting ready to leave, our front desk told us that several of their housekeepers weren't able to show up to work today because they live in Mexico and the port of entry is closed, so they can't get across. They've got to divert 57 miles away to the east to Eagle Pass, Texas. These are people legally coming into the U.S. trying to work. Americans go into Mexico. Mexicans come into the United States. They do it legally over the port of entry. It's closed right now, so you can imagine it's causing a lot of problems for people all over the area. We'll send it back to you. Hey, Bill, one quick question before I let you go. Once they get on those buses, where do they go? That's the golden question, Charles. We don't know. Uh, you know, we, we, we followed one for a little bit last night. It got onto the main interstate and headed towards uh, the Eagle Pass area, but we, we just do not know where they are going. The local facilities here in the Del Rio area are completely over capacity, so there's no room for them here. Wow. So they're having to take, what, what I've been told from border agents is they're maybe taking them to stations in Alpine, Comstock, Elsewhere in Texas, possibly other states, they're having to surge border agents from the northern border to come down here and help. So uh, I'd love to give you a crystal clear answer on where all these buses are going. We just don't know right now, unfortunately. That is mind boggling. Bill, you've been doing great work. Thank you so much. And we are in the ABC 7 Alert Center with breaking news. A foiled human smuggling scheme after Border Patrol found 49 migrants in a semi trailer during an inspection near Sierra Blanca. Take a look. These are the pictures agents took of the migrants inside the truck. The undocumented migrants include people from Brazil, Ecuador, El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, Mexico, and Peru. Border Patrol says the driver of the truck is a visa holder who has been detained and handed over to Homeland Security for prosecution.
First at 10, laying their loved one to rest. The funeral for a Valley tow truck driver happening just hours after police announced an arrest in his murder. ABC 15's Lustelia Caballero covering the big development for us tonight. And Lustelia, this driver's family is finally getting some answers. That's right. Finally getting some answers. It was a very emotional night tonight for this family. We are talking. They said goodbye to their loved one just weeks after he was found shot to death in his tow truck. And while they were laying their loved one to rest on the same token, they were also getting a sense of justice. It was very hard for me to think that. I won't see him again. Luis Cervantes says he and Evani Corona go way back, meeting in their hometown of Michoacán in Mexico more than 10 years ago. He was a very nice guy, always uh, laughing. Uh, Evani, a very hardworking guy. When Corona moved to the U.S. three years ago, he started working for Cervantes at his towing company. Now, Cervantes can't believe he's gone. Everybody's crying and... I didn't want to see him, but I had to, and then I was shocked. Phoenix PD says in June, a man named Luis Garcia and Corona got into an argument involving gunfire at the tow yard. Garcia accused of stealing from the business. No arrests made at that point, but court documents show Garcia threatened Corona's life over text messages. Then, just weeks ago, Corona found shot to death near 35th Avenue and Buckeye, and Garcia now arrested. We've also learned he isn't allowed to own a gun as an undocumented immigrant. Evani's sisters Indira and Litsi Corona hadn't seen him since he left Michoacán three years ago. Horrible, feo, está corto. And while their hearts are heavy, Cervantes says they take comfort in knowing Garcia is behind bars. Why do you feel that justice has been served? Lo amamos con todo nuestro corazón. Siempre fue mi héroe y mi guardián. Y hasta la fecha lo sigue siendo. Lustelia Caballero, ABC 15, Arizona.